Hey, what's up guys? Notice anything different about me? I'm sure you could tell, but I dyed my hair a darker shade of brown. It was red, and I am going to go back to red in October, but I just wanted to mix things up a bit. If you happen to stumble across this video and you're new to my channel, I'm normally doing art-related videos where I'm doing tutorials or I'm doing vlogs. However, I've been reading a lot of poetry in my class, and it got me thinking about the poetry that I wrote a long time ago, and I just decided, you know what, I feel that it's time to share some of the things that I wrote back in high school a long time ago with you guys. Ugh, okay, I can't believe I'm doing this because they are so personal, but why not just give it a go the more i think about this the more i'm just going to chicken out and not do it so <laughs> i'm just gonna get started this is the poetry book that i had back in high school i took a poetry and public speaking course they were both a whole year long and i think that was probably one of the best classes that i took um throughout my high school coursework and I had a really great teacher as well. I was in a hurry to finish this. I was in a mad dash. I got points taken off because I didn't have a title page, which I think is so funny because you guys know how I'm very artistic and I love to decorate things, but I didn't even put the title. In the front cover, <laughs> the teacher wrote me a note. Heather, this chapter book is a wonderful collection of your poems. Have you considered publishing them? Now you'd think that I'd be really flattered by this comment but <laughs> I actually got pretty heated because I thought lady do not try to fill me with hot air and blow sunshine up my hoo-ha if these aren't good poems and I didn't have a lot of confidence in my writing back then and I wouldn't even say I'm that confident now but I have a lot more than I used to see I'm starting to already stall because I'm a little bit hesitant to share what I have with the, written in this with you guys but okay I'm gonna Grow some courage, Heather. Grow some courage. Out of respect for your viewership, I wanted to let you know this video does contain mild language. As always, thank you so much for the support and kindness. I paint a face to cover up another. Learn techniques taught to me by my mother. Blacks, browns, shades of rosy pinks. Retro blues, frosty whites, and brushes to fix the kinks. A dashing bright red stick can give your lips a pop. Once you play around with makeup, it's very hard to stop. Sometimes I wonder what it would be like to leave the house without it. But I always get the anxiety that I'm going to look like shit. It makes me feel naked and a little bit frumpy. Always the fear that my skin will look bumpy. But there is a soul who has seen my unpainted face. I apologize for my unattractiveness, but he tells me that isn't the case. I don't always believe him, but it's very sweet to hear. Around him wearing my bare skin no longer becomes a fear. It's the best feeling to be told you're beautiful, even when at the moment you're not. Maybe some of us girls will break away from the beauty traditions we've been taught. If you're wondering about the guy I was talking about? It wasn't my dad. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people would assume it's my dad, and he doesn't really care about makeup anyways, but that was written about my boyfriend at the time, who was a really sweet man. Next one is about my boyfriend um, that I had in high, my senior year. I'm surrounded by the curiosity lingering in my head. I want to venture out into the hills, catch some thrills wherever the green grass led. My curiosity was cured some days ago. We went up into the hills. We walked past streets and cars and people in their hurries. We keep on walking towards the hills where there will be no worries. He holds my hand and kisses me as we are greeted by greens and browns, opposed to pavement blacks and grays. The breeze flows uphill. The green grass simply sways. We walk until we reach a comfy spot nestled between the trees. You can see the whole city up here, but his eyes are on me. This is how I want to spend my days, surrounded by nature and love. This is what I'm so grateful for. I thank my God above. That's a cute little poem right there, right? These ones are a lot more playful, but the ones that really hit me hard are a little bit further in the book. So if you're already falling asleep, I'm sorry, but <laughs> that was just, these are my opening ones. Okay, the next one is called Alive. Sometimes before I go to bed, I wonder if this could be the end, but yet I still wake up. I must have a purpose. 
This is a really interesting one. Uh, very short, but there was something really powerful when I wrote it. Um, I don't know if it really comes across with the writing, but there was something profound I was feeling when I wrote that poem. Now we're at the part where these are the poems that get to me. This just <laughs> crushed through my heart when I read these. These are super personal and when I wrote them I was in a very sad place. And for some reason my teacher didn't put any notes on these ones but these are my favorite ones out of all of them. What if I'm not the person you make me out to be? What if deep down I have a heart of gold? What if you saw the tears I cried? Would that matter to you? Or would slander still strike me? I know my own truth. You don't have any clue what my truth is. So why talk if you simply don't know? The next one, this, this is Lonely Ghost, is my favorite poem uh, because I feel something really deep when I read this. I go back to the state of mind that I was in when I wrote this. <sighs> so much to say but no ears to listen. Out of frustration, my eyes start to glisten. I feel like a ghost, observant, but can't interfere. May have good input, but no one can hear. My soul feels empty, down it weighs. I'm stuck in this feeling many of days. Oh my goodness, this poem always gets me because every time I read it, it takes me back to that same place I was in. I can't believe I'm getting emotional over my high school freaking poetry book, but it just, I was in a very sad place. I'm really happy I was able to come out of that. And if anybody is in that place right now, you feel really sad. You don't feel that there's any reason to keep going. I just want you to know there is so much left for you to do in life and your journey doesn't stop here. I almost want to read this one again because it's just so powerful. So much to say, but no ears to listen. Out of frustration, my eyes start to glisten. Hello, I'm doing that right now. I feel like a ghost, observant, but can't interfere. This is also a really powerful line to me because I didn't feel that I could do anything with my life. I didn't feel like I had any control over it in a way. I may have input, but no one can hear. My soul feels empty, down it weighs, I'm stuck in this feeling many of days. Just that gives me this visual image of when I would come home from school and nobody would know what I was going through or how I felt and I would just be in my room and I'd be so upset. Maybe this reading poetry thing wasn't the best idea for me. <laughs> what I would want to tell somebody that is going through something very similar to this is that I don't want to say life gets easier because I don't think that you should think of life in a way of everything should just be gumdrop fairies but it you will learn how to cope with things better as you go through life and it can be really challenging when you have a lot of things being thrown at you early in your life you don't really know how to deal with it you don't have the experience of dealing with it yet and you're gonna get better at doing that. You're gonna still have challenges later in your life, but you're gonna be so much stronger because you've went through this. If you look at it from a religious or from an evolutionary standpoint, I don't think anybody's just here. I really don't think that. I think that you have something to contribute and you shouldn't be doubting yourself or thinking you, sh you don't belong here because that is so wrong and um, you definitely can get help if you're feeling this way and <laughs> you you could really come out of this okay um i'm gonna go on to the next poem because i could stay on this one the entire video but let's go on to the next one so the next one is titled silence another one i hope i don't cry during this one too this is oh my goodness i want to speak i want to speak but cannot find the words i slip into a silent world where thoughts are never heard it kills myself to think i don't have courage to say what's on my mind too worried about what people will say or what flaws they'll find. It festers deep and wants to speak, but must remain inside. Someday my words will be set free, but for now they remain confined. Ah, so sad. No, oh no. Okay, this is another poem that is so personal. I don't even, like, I don't want to say it's inappropriate for school, but it's inappropriate for school in a way. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so this is another one I wrote. I put, 
And this girl and I felt very similar feelings of sadness and frustration, and I dedicated this poem to her. I'm, I can't believe I'm reading this. This is... Ugh. They will never believe you till you're dead. They never seem to get that through their head. Even though their child is drowning, they can only scold their child's frowning. Children try to reach out, but are never heard. Nothing they say counts, not even a word. This is because they are not an adult. Thinking they know better is such an insult. You are the parent, you are smarter. Brilliant things don't count if they come from your daughter. That last line is just so mm, irreverent. I love that last line so much, but this poem is um, very dark, very dark. The latter half of this book is all happy poems, so thankfully, you know, we're gonna have some more positive, upbeat feelings, except this one's more angsty than it is anything else. So, the insanity of school. What's wrong with me? Why can't I be like them? I can try all I want, but I can never come close. I can work hard. I can work my ass off but they can accomplish the same in half the time without the effort or heart. All that seems to matter is the letter grade on your paper, that minus number across from your name and date, and that pompous grade point average. Oh no, not what you get out of learning, just if you happen to bubble in the right answer. It doesn't matter what happens after that. All those correct answers can fly in one ear and out the other, but that's okay, because that's really all I'm expected to do. Sit in a chair like a robot, processing information because I'm told and forced to do so by the go- Because I'm told and forced by the government to do so. It's very clear they know better how to manage my life. Wasting hours of my life, taking meaningless tests, hearing scandalous chatter while I'm trying to concentrate and having to sit obediently while the teacher must take time out of educating to play the role of a parent and scold, not punish, whiny, unruly classmates that don't even know the meaning of discipline. They have no problem wasting everybody's time with foolishness. <laughs> But I can't curl up and sink into my pessimism, even though you kind of did, Heather. <laughs> I only have a few months left, and who knows, maybe college will be a completely different story. <laughs> Now, this is a very funny poem to me because I did feel very upset at the beginning of the poem. I'm talking about these students who I felt were just very gifted and smart, and I wanted to be like them and just absorb everything really quickly and just be that A student, but I didn't feel that they actually gave a damn about the content. They were just there to get a 4.0 or a 4.5, whatever freaking grade point average, and it made me so mad because I didn't feel they cared about learning, but yet they were able able to do it better than me from my perspective and it pissed me off so much and then in the later half of the poem I'm talking about <laughs> students who just pissed around and they didn't care about sitting in the classroom in the first place and they distracted everybody which also really frustrated me I didn't feel that anybody really cared about learning so I was just complaining about this in my poem and I wrote this for one of our free writes during class we had to do just some kind of writing and I wrote this and I had to have another student read my paper and for one it was kind of embarrassing for somebody else to read this one and his criticism to me because originally I just left it off on uh, what is it have they have no problem wasting everybody's time with their foolishness. Originally, that was the end of this poem, but he told me to put a positive spin on it because it was just so negative. So that's what I did. I <laughs> put in the last half and I begrudgingly put the last half in there because I really didn't think I was going to go to college. I just put that in there for some reason. And so I felt very irritated writing that in. But you know what's funny is I agree so much with the last line, but my educational experience did get better when I went to college. For the most part, you meet a lot of people who are actually very invested in bettering themselves and learning and not wasting your time with being a class clown. Not that there's anything wrong with being a class clown. You always bring some kind of 
awesomeness to the classroom as long as you're not derailing the whole classroom. <laughs> so this next poem, I really like this page. It makes me very happy to look at. This is my happiness poem that I wrote to cheer myself up. This is so okay. Looking at this already and comparing it to what I wrote earlier in my book, this is so contrasting, but I digress. Let me just read this. I wish people could see how beautiful life can truly be. Everyone suffers, we all feel pain, but don't forget about the rainbow after the rain. We all have those days that are bad, but what's the point of being mad? You can still breathe, you're still thriving, so why waste your time being conniving? For your enemies, you have no time to spare. If people don't like you, why should you care? The most important thing is to love who you are. Keep believing in yourself and you will go far. Never go a day without basking in nature's beauty. Tending to nature is our worldly duty. Treasure every delicate butterfly that flutters by. Cherish every moment till the day you die. Now, I do like this poem. Uh, and the rainbow after the rain, I noticed there was a song on the radio that I heard the same lyrics and I was thinking, oh my goodness, okay, so I'm not the only person that had the rainbow rain kind of thing going on. No, I did not write that based on the song, by the way. I know I'm gonna have some younger viewers coming in, but I wrote this back in 2009. I'm not this young Skippy that I think a lot of people assume I am, uh, but no, I wrote this a long freaking time ago and uh, it was, actually but it was but I have to say it was really nice hearing somebody have the same line that I thought of a long time ago because it's a powerful line uh, my poetry book is legitimately falling apart as we speak great <laughs> but I hope that you enjoyed listening to my poems they are very personal to me and again I don't consider myself this poet or anything like that, although I would really like to illustrate poetry or make videos based off of poems, that would be super cool. This is not my domain, so I know I'm going to have people that are really interested in the subject just um, not like my stuff. I already know that. But when I compare it to the art world, I think about how many people don't consider themselves artists or they don't consider themselves good at drawing. Some of the concepts and the drawings that they come up with are so freaking good, but they wouldn't dare to consider themselves an artist. And that's such an interesting thing for me to think about. So maybe I shouldn't hate on my work as much. It's another just form of my artwork. It's another outlet for me. I'm going to be posting my vlog coming up and you'll get to see the next chapter in my sketchbook that I've been working on. I love you guys so much. Thank you for sitting here and listening to me today and I hope that you have a beautiful day and if you're going through anything difficult just know that life is full of challenges but you are strong enough to get through them and there's so much help out there so I love you guys and I will be seeing you in my next video. Mwah.